Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to speed build through a mask. There's been, you know, a shortage of them and they're also not the most comfortable things to wear. So I wanted to make something that was form fitting and comfortable that I could wear like skateboarding for a few hours or even just going to the store, walking to the store so I don't get any sort of chafings, irritations, and infections just from these tiny little elastic straps cutting into my face. The other thing is I have a lot of money. So I made all this stuff out of things I had laying around uh, in my house. And in the video I kept it as simple as possible and used as many household items as I could. The patterns for this mask, if you want to make one, are free. There's a link to them. It's in a Facebook post. You just follow the link to the Facebook post, save them, and then print them out at your discretion. Uh, but yeah, uh... Ever since they've been announcing to wear something, even if it's just a bandana or an old t-shirt. I tried some of those. I didn't like the bandana. It kind of drove me crazy. Uh, I ended up going through all of my painting masks and filters. But then I realized I had a Tyvek painter suit. And Tyvek will allow air to pass in and out, but kind of stops the moisture. So I decided to use that as a filter for this. And I didn't put the filter holes on the mask. You could do that at your own discretion and do whatever you want with it. And even though this isn't a cosplay build video per se, there is still elements to this. Like you could download these free patterns and like make a scorpion mask or a shredder face mask or whatever. Like you, you want to do with it too. But yeah. Uh, hopefully everybody out there is staying safe. And I won't ramble anymore. Let's go ahead and just jump right into the video. Okay, so first you're going to need to trace out your patterns. You're going to need one for the middle, one for each side. Uh, you just trace one side and flip it over. And I labeled each sides, so top A, bottom A, bottom B, top A. And I've already cut some of these out, but essentially anywhere where there is registration marks, you want to cut it with an inward angled cut. You don't want the cut going outwards. You don't want it straight. You want the, the cut going angled in, which is what I've done here. Along this one, you can see there's an angle. And same here, anywhere where there's a registration marks, you need to have an inward angle. Now, to keep this simple and make it accessible for everyone, I'm just going to do this with a pair of scissors. Okay, so I'm going to start with this side piece here and my scissors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a straight cut. And as I go around this bend here, I'm going to gradually start to work into holding and cutting my scissors at an angle. And hopefully you can get a picture of that. The scissors are following the line, but they're angled inwards to give this cut. Uh, most people, myself included, will use an X-Acto knife for this part. But as you can probably see here, you get a nice smooth cut using scissors. An X-Acto knife you can but it's kind of more of a, I don't think maybe trade specific is the word, but it's something that if you're in the hobby of foam smithing and doing stuff like that for your cos cosplays, uh, you do use an X-Acto knife. But if you're just an every everyday person off the street and you don't have those tools, well, scissors work just fine. And once again here along the ends, I don't need to have an angled cut just through here and through here and in the middle itself I'm just gonna put that inward angle cut all the way around it Now I'm going to start by gluing the pieces together and the first two pieces I'm going to glue together is going to be the side, uh, each side to the middle. So I need to apply my contact cement along here. Now if you don't have contact cement there's other things you could use. You could use hot glue, you could use 
Uh, super glue, however, hot glue you can't really heat form or shape because it'll melt if it gets hot. And the super glue gets a little stiff, and I think that's your best bet if you don't have contact cement. It's mostly used in construction for things like countertops, but in the cosplay world we use it for foam. And how this works is you take the brush and you apply some to each surface to be bonded. And I'll pull the brush out, clean off my excess, and then just brush some on each surface that you need to glue. Once you've done that, you just let the pieces set for 15 minutes. And then once it doesn't feel sticky or wet and it's nice and dry, you line the pieces up and glue them together. Okay, I've waited my 15 minutes, so now this is not wet or sticky or anything. I'm going to start with the top and glue the sides together, lining up my registration marks. All right, now that the top and bottom together, you can kind of already see where the shape is going. Next, I'm going to apply contact cement uh, along this whole entire bottom here on both sides and along the top as well where all the registration marks are and where these top pieces are going to glue in. And I'm also going to put glue along the areas of the top where the registration marks are and on the flat side where they're going to join together and also going to apply contact cement along here and in the center as well where the two are going to join together. Okay, so you're going to attach the top and bottom in a similar manner and by that what I mean is you're going to use this center registration mark to start it off and you're going to glue both sides first, okay? Once you have your two sides joined, then you can glue together the center part of it. And this is true for both the top and the bottom. You want to glue together the top first on each side and then join them together in the center. Okay, you can see here, even without elastic, it does conform pretty well to my face, and I haven't heated it or anything. So, if you've watched my channel before, or any other foam smithing style channels, you'll notice they use a heat gun to heat and shape the foam. However, since this video is based around uh, convenience and stuff that most people have at home, I'm just going to use a hair dryer. And I'm going to heat the foam, and just kind of curve this around, 
and get it to match it to my face a bit more than it does right now in its flat state. Okay, so that helped to round it out so that it will fit to my face a whole lot better. However, from here I'm going to take the hair dryer and just heat some areas like right in here to fit a little tighter to my face and to my nose right there. I need to kind of heat and bend those in, but a little further shaping and this should fit nice and sm uh, snug over my nose and mouth. Okay, obviously though, you cannot breathe out of this because the foam is solid. So I've cut a hole here, I figured out where my mouth was, and I've cut a hole, and I then cut something to use as a filter. Now, I'm using a piece of a Tyvek painter suit. Tyvek does not allow moisture to pass in and out, but it does. it is breathable. It allows oxygen to pass in and out. That's why painters wear it. And I actually used this before to keep uh, airflow to seedlings that were prone to bacteria and if you just covered them with a lid they would shrivel up and die from too much water so you needed it to still be breathable and this stuff actually worked great and I was able to sterilize it by cleaning both sides with alcohol before covering the seedlings and sealing them up in a mason jar so that's what I've chosen to use for this partly just because I have it but this is pretty available you can still get it at places like Lowe's and those places are still open and after I cut my hole, I made a ring that is going to hold this all together and glue it all in place. And I'm going to glue this with super glue this time, not contact cement. Okay, everything has been glued together, and now when I put it on, air can actually pass in and out of it. And as you'll notice, there's not a hole on the pattern. As far as what holes or how you want to ventilate your mask and what materials you want to use for that, that's up to you. And there are a lot of articles right now from nurses and doctors about what types of materials that you can use for filtration uh, systems and masks that collect the least amount of bacteria. This tie back here is pretty neutral and the part in here facing my mouth is the part that has more of a plastic coating because if it isn't obvious enough you can't wash this. All I can do with this is put some rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle and spray it down and wipe it off and essentially sterilize it. Cannot put this in the washing machine and once it gets too beat up or grody I'm gonna have to throw it away which is why I'm speed building this one but I'm gonna make three or four more right off the bat so that when this one gets worn out or just cruddy I can pitch it. Okay so this next part here is completely and totally optional. You don't have to seal it or paint it or do anything. This isn't a cosplay project but just to have something that makes me feel like less of a nerd as I'm out skateboarding 
I'm going to take and seal this and paint it, and I'm going to seal it with some Mod Podge. And part of the reason why I'm using that is because use on all surfaces, non-toxic. Okay, this is much safer than Plasti Dip or anything to seal your mask. If you want, you could seal the inside as well. Uh, in fact, I may just do that. I think it'd be a little bit easier to wipe it and clean it. But yeah, I'm just going to use a brush and apply this until it's completely absorbed in the foam. And, because the foam itself is porous, so it generally takes several coats to actually seal the foam in to paint it or for wear and tear. Okay, that's just the first coat to the outside. I'm going to do several like that, and like I say, until it's well filled in, and then I'm just going to paint it one flat color with some non-toxic craft paint. Okay, I put on two thick layers of Mod Podge, and then I just painted over all this with some non-toxic kids craft paint. And that stuff on itself isn't very durable, but I sealed that in with a couple layers of Mod Podge, and I just left this black. I didn't Put any paint on it so the next thing is your decision as to how to connect it uh the disposable ones i can't get a hold of at this point but when i could get a hold of them they really are not comfortable those bands that go back behind your ears like really cut into my ears all funny and start to just irritate my skin and as that's happening and it's getting chafed and starting to break open, I'm sweating skateboarding or outside working or walking to the store in order to save money uh, because I don't have the funds for gas. Like, as I'm doing this stuff, it's, it's really irritating me and it's causing uh, caused a slight infection on the backside of one of my ears. So my solution for that was to use two bands. One that goes beneath my ears, basically around the base of my skull where the back of my head meets my neck. And one that goes up over the top of my head whenever I'm wearing it. And I can still put a hat over this. I can still put a helmet over it, you know, if I'm, like, going to skate a bowl or something, which I'm not very good at skateboarding on transition. So I generally wear a helmet if I'm going to skate anything over, like, a three or four foot half pipe or bowl. And this is kind of perfect for that. And like I say, it's good for, like, courtesy and showing others that you're trying to at least contain your germs within yourself. But whenever they said, just put a bandana around your face because you don't have access to, don't have money for, or can't find, or a scrap of cloth, like, there's nothing wrong with that. But me being me, I just don't want to be misconstrued as, like, a robber. I understand everybody's doing it, but with my luck, I'd end up getting shot by a security guard or a cop or something for looking like I'm about to go rob a place. So this here at least looks, you know, like a protective mask. It doesn't look like something you're going to go hold up a convenience store with, which, by the way, convenience stores and, you know, <coughs> uh, supermarkets and banks are, like, the only thing open now. So, yeah, that was kind of my other part, like, at the back of my, uh, back of my mind. So I'm going to throw this on so you can see what it looks like. Yeah, so here we are. I have it on. And as you can see, I have one strap going up over my head and one going around the back of my neck. My ears are still free. Uh, I can still put my Bluetooth headphones in if I'm skateboarding, riding a bicycle, walking to the store, doing anything like that. Uh, there's nothing really constricting me. I can still put a hat or a beanie or a helmet or whatever I need to over it, and I can still breathe. And I, you know, like I say, sealed it with non toxic stuff so that I can hand clean it. Once it gets too beat up or starts to fall apart, then, you know, I'll switch over to another one. And I'm going to make, like I say, four or five of these masks. But this elastic that I used, I got off of some headlamps. Uh, 
that I had already appropriated for some cosplay means, so I had the elastic lying around. If you don't like elastic or don't want to do that, if, I don't know, you have shoestring, ribbon, anything, and you prefer to tie it, you can always glue that in and just tie it in a bow or double bow it to make sure it doesn't come undone if that's more comfortable for you, if you don't like elastic and the way that feels. Like, I understand that. <laughs> but, yeah, work with what you have, and... And at this point, I think everybody kind of is just working with what we have. So hopefully this helped you out, gave you some ideas. Uh, some other ideas I had, I wasn't able to execute because of time. I do happen to have a decent amount of scrap fabric. Uh, what I wanted to do was enlarge the pattern slightly. Uh, about a quarter of an inch all the way around. And make one out of cloth. That would be more or less the same way with just a simple string tie, but I didn't have time to do that, and I don't actually have the resources either. Uh, I have plenty of fabric, but not a whole lot of thread, and yeah. So like I say, patterns are up for free on Facebook, so follow that link and get them. And like I, like I say, if you're a cosplayer and you have extra scrap foam, and some fabric of some sort. Like I said, I got lucky because I had the Tyvek. But you can go ahead and make yourself your own mask without getting charged an arm and a leg when you already don't have money. Uh, <laughs> with the economy being in the state that it is and everything being shut down and many people being unemployed. But if you're a cosplayer and you have scrap foam or maybe your kids just have scrap foam. I picked this stuff up at Hobby Lobby. They sell it at Walmart. Uh, I haven't ever bought any from Walmart. Uh, I used to get it from Joanne Fabrics, but a lot of these places are closed. So even if I still had a job and had money, I wouldn't have the resources to go out and just specifically purchase foam for these videos or for these projects. Uh, and as I stated, I believe at the beginning of the video, I do have a build video that's already filmed and ready to go up and will be up soon. I just wanted to edit and upload this one first because I felt it was more helpful considering the current situation. So thank you everyone for watching, and I hope that you all have a great day, and stay safe, be smart, and be careful.